All right, we have kind of a different uh, setup this week. We're going to try something a little different. We're just going to kind of go through the news one by one and then oh. talk about it as we go. So welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending. Um, I'm definitely looking down to the bottom of the screen. March 20th, 2021. Um, starting with a story about Netflix contracting with Studio Digital Frontier. Japanese 3D CG studio Digital Frontier revealed this week it signed a contract with Netflix to collaborate with the company's digital production department on original works and several other projects over the next few years. This is the first time Netflix has signed such a contract with a Japanese studio for visual effects. Oh. Yes. The first project was the live-action Alice in Borderlands series with CG and digital effects okay. from Digital Frontier. That debuted back in December and has a second season coming up. Um, Digital Frontier was founded in 1993 and currently has around 250 employees. Um, it's produced visual effects yeah. for various live action series like Bleach, Death Note, and Gantz. Uh, anime like Gantz O, Summer Wars, Wolf Children, and several video game related anime, mm -hmm. as well as cutscenes for Final Fantasy VII Remake, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and other games. Wow. Kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and it's interesting that it's Crunchyroll, now that, you know, we've had the Funimation Sony Crunchyroll thing happen, mm -hmm. that it's, so I'm still waiting to hear, how is that going to result? Crunchyroll's obviously doing things under its own authority. Mm -hmm. How, so how did the merger ha affect anything? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I had mentioned that before, but like Funimation was doing licensing and Crunchyroll was doing broadcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Crunchyroll's obviously steaming ahead. Mm -hmm. So what was the whole merger about? What changed? I, 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 I may have forgotten. Which Crunchyroll merger are you talking about here? Crun uh, Funimation, Sony bought Crunchyroll. Right. But what does that have to do with Netflix? Oh, I'll, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, was like, I was just like, I was like, mm, I, yeah, I, I just, I totally went that way because I'm like, wow, I want to see these new things. Are they on Crunchyroll? No, no, sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> ah. Um, <sighs> Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of kind of upcoming interesting stuff, um, the live-action Cowboy Bebop first season has wrapped filming. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Um, after that great musical Cowboy Bebop panel we had earlier, <laughs> um, it's only appropriate this week we bring up some Bebop-related news. Um, actress Daniela Pineda, who plays Faye in the upcoming live-action, revealed on Instagram this week the Netflix adaptation has finished filming its first season. Um, that's, again, filming, not necessarily post-production and so forth. Okay. She posted a picture wearing a Bebop t-shirt and commented, I'm coming back on air to say season one of Cowboy Bebop is finally finished. Um, production of this series was originally set to start in October 2019, but it was put on hold shortly after due to John Cho's onset knee injury. Um, then it was shut down entirely because of this coronavirus right. thing. Um, the series staff was allowed back into New Zealand in July of 2020. Um, now, the writer and executive producer, Jeff Pinkner, teased back in April of 2020 that the second season is already planned for the show. To be clear, that probably means, like, the writer's room has planned, not necessarily that Netflix is like, here's the money for it. Right. Um, but they have, they have plans for it. They also commented that the, um, the hour episode length of the show allows the stories to, quote, mm -hmm. really tell stories set in that world in a way that hopefully will not only delight the fans of anime, but expose a whole bunch of new people to the world of Cowboy Bebop and the awesome work of Yoko Kano, end quote. Yes. Hmm. Now, they We're said, what does the first said. season cover? They have not in detail. They've, I mean, they've said it's all going to be, you know, adaptations of, you know, stories in the anime series. They're not going to go off that far off. Okay. Um, and... So it's a not a not a one for one of the anime series. It's not just live over slapped over top of the anime. Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Yeah. But but at the same t but at the same time, it's not they're not going away from the formula in that you know they they have the individual stories, but they yeah. also have the the overall story arcs. So yeah, yeah. Right. It's not going away from that. Yeah. As far as I know, they're not writing new storylines. Right, um, but they're just you know adapting these existing storylines to live action, right? How how would that how would that work? How can we kind of tell those stories in a slightly different way? Hmm. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's so very curious. Um, and again, Yoko Kano handling the music, good thing. It should be we'll beautiful. See. Exactly. Um, speaking of live action anime, 
Bandai Spirits and Sunrise have revealed a new entry in the Gundam franchise as part of the Gunpla Link project, held to mark the 40th anniversary of Gunpla models. The format of this new series wow. is a little different than what we're used to, though. The new Gundam build real drama will actually be live action. So Gundam drama, build. Yes. What? It is the next Gundam, Gundam build. build series. Is a live action series. The battles are waged between life size projections of scanned gunplay models, and the battles are fought by teams for fun rather than the fate of the world. Um, oh. The team's pilots direct the projections through first person view VR goggles. So it is the Gundam Build franchise concept as a live action series. Wow. Um, it'll tell uh, the Gundam Build Real will tell the story of a group of boys Dang. who enjoyed gunplay battles since childhood and reunite in, of course, their first year of high school to form a, a battle team called Team Bright, which if you know your Gundam, awesome name. Um, the team consists of a pilot, a builder, a programmer, and a communicator. Um, they had used an RG Gunpla with an uh, enhanced Armageddon bazooka. Um, uh, if you're looking forward to the new series after the exciting announcement, you won't have long to wait. Gundam Build Real will begin airing next week on March wow. 29th. Holy crap. Yeah, there's a, there's a trailer out there and everything that shows, you know, oh. guys running around, you know, and doing all that. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I'd be curious to see how they're going to work with the projections of the scans. Yeah. That'll be exactly. interesting. I mean, I'm sure what's going to happen, like, like Gundam Bill, it'll be, they'll put on VR goggles, and then it's just going to be CGI. You know, just CGI gun, you know, Gundams basically right. running around doing things in, in a little simulated environment, right? Just like all that kind of stuff. It'll be fine. I, I just see i'm sorry i just see this like you know well production up until they put the goggles on and it goes to robo jocks <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> i was thinking like a sci-fi original film like oh boy you know it's like oh um so to be clear as far as i know it's this and g savior that's that's the live action gundam you know timeline that, that that's that that's what we have oh. in terms of live action gundam mm. um g savior for those not familiar not well received by the average no. gundam fan um it was a um japanese canadian co-production um back in the late 90s early 2000s oh um that was an experience but yeah so here's my question to you guys like um does that sound like a, a thing that will work? You know, a, a live action Gundam build series. I don't mean to giggle, but the proof is going to be in the pudding. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. mean, I, I can't yeah, even see predict it. on that because, exactly. like I said, if it's like a sci fi channel kind of movie of the week, there you could, there's so much wrong that could happen with the CGI. Yeah. Part. <laughs> yeah. So they, but this is Gundam. Right, like th this is Sunrise Bandai behind this doing the thing. Yeah, but even yeah. even greats can can go wrong. Well, <laughs> I mean, absolutely, yeah. always the chance. Yeah. But so but, but, it could I mean, be Robo You know, I don't think they're going to cheap out on it. Right, I don't think we have to worry that it's going to look cheap. Um, <laughs> it could be Battle Zone. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it could be all sorts of things. <laughs> Yeah, and it, and that's the thing. It's that's where the proof of the pudding is going to happen. It could be all sorts of things. I mean, they could misstep on just general screen production. Like, you know, are the characters just kind of odd in the circumstances they're in? Is the is the acting good? Um, and and is it really targeted towards a particular audience? Right. And, you know, right. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. You know that, that kind of. That and that's word. what fascinates me. Um, the fact that. You know, J dramas are generally targeted towards that slightly older audience, right? Um, Gundam is generally pitched, to, and especially the Gundam Build series, is generally pitched, um, pitched towards like a more young teen, you know, 13, 14 type right. of audience, maybe 15. Yeah. But, you know, when you see Japanese live action high schoolers gathering around a thing and there's that kind of drama, I can see this pulling in a different kind of crowd. Um, so I'm curious about that. Maybe some old school Gundam fans from yeah. you know the years gone by but you're going to have to dial that in to somebody who's in their 30s now yeah. but I mean, I mean it, it's, mm. so, so what, what I want to know is in, in order to join Team Bright you have to be slapped right it's true 
Um, yes. I, 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 I predict that will actually be a thing that they will do. Thinking, Welcome to Team Bright. You know, yeah. they'll just kind of do this, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, Those are hazing rituals. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, uh, but no, and this is the other interesting thing is, you know, again, Gundam is kind of the Star Trek of Japan and that it's just kind of everywhere. Um, I can see a lot, I can see the average, you know, 30 year old going, oh yeah, Gundam. Right? right. Like this, this is, there, there's not so much a nostalgia, but a, oh, here is my in. I'm not really into the anime. I'm not really into the manga or whatever, but I'll watch a live action series about this thing that I'm aware of. Mm. That's, that, that's the interesting, interesting idea. You know, this could be kind of their Gundam, if you will. Um, who knows? But we, we can find out next week. <laughs> and, the, and then there's going to be more vitriolic hatred between certain Gundam groups. And yeah, be like, yeah, yeah. I'm in the live action camp and I hate you people in the anime camp. Yeah, like, oh, no, oh, please don't do that. Come on. Um, I hate the live action dub. I hate the live action sub. I hate the <laughs> yeah. sub dub. I hate, I hate. It's just causing division. Why can't we just all have love? Exactly. All you need is love. Go watch Spriggan. <laughs> Go watch Amagami Sama. There we yes. go. It's all about Bell Dandy. It's all about the it love. It is, actually. Um, also this week, just n- news to mention, the jacket band on Junji Ito's Disturbing Zone manga uh, will officially reveal this week the author's Junji Ito Masterworks Collection manga is inspiring a new anime project. Pretty cool. Um, uh, the Masterworks collection has some of Ito's more famous works and contains 11 total volumes published um, in the wow. early 2010s. Um, the previous Junji Ito collection anime aired in 2018 and also adapted some stories from that collection, um, as well as the Fragments of Horror book, which is an anthology. Um, mm. So more Junji Ito coming. This seems to be kind of the, the era of Junji Ito. Um, yeah, no joke. Yeah, crunchy, and now now the Crunchyroll uh, comment can come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because mm-hmm. Crunchyroll's been featuring a ton of Junji Ito for like, I want to say like the last year. Mm. T-shirts, uh, collection figures, like anything you can name, Crunchyroll's just had. It's like Crunchyroll loves Junji Ito, and I'm like, I walked into a Hot Topic the other day, and they had Junji Ito T-shirts. Yeah, yeah, I don't really. Yeah, have I? I mean, who does Yamashibai? That's not Junji Ito, no. is it? That's probably like the darkest I go. The mm-hmm. t-shirts and stuff I've seen, I'm like, there's one like a slug cr- crawling out of a girl's mouth. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know that that's something I can get into. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. It's very specific. Um, Seems very dark. Very, yeah. Very dark. Mm-hmm. I believe I'm going to look up here real quick. Um, um, did, did he do... Um, did he do a thing with that? Yes, he did. Um, I talk occasionally about a series called Naoki Urasawa no Manben, where Naoki Urasawa, the author of 20th Century Boys and Pluto and Monster and Master Keaton and all that kind of stuff, okay. um, he produces a um, TV series on NHK where they go to another manga's place of work, set up cameras, and film that mangaka working. And then Urasawa and the mangaka meet up afterwards to review the footage and talk about what it's like to make manga. Hmm. Okay. And they kind of analyze, what is your process? When you're actually drawing, how do you do things? Uh, in the first episode, they're like, when you draw a face, what facial feature do you start with? Urasawa okay. always starts with the eyebrows. Right, right? Because <laughs> um, he said, I, there's so much acting in the eyebrows. Is somebody shocked? Is somebody whatever? I want to get that nailed down. If I know that aspect of their face, everything else flows from that. Interesting. Right, so it's that kind of stuff. He did a whole episode with, Jin- with Jinji Ito. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go into the mind of Junji Ito... <laughs> <laughs> was it like? Was it really eye opening? Like creepy kind of um, eye opening? Eye opening in the sense of like bugs crawling out of eyes. Uh, no. I, yeah. Um, yes, it was um, because Junji Ito is a very normal, you know, very you know laid back kind of a guy, right? Just a normal guy next door. Um, and they talked about that thing that you know he says, yeah. That's what they said about Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> right. You know, they talk about the, you know, <laughs> like, everyone kind of assumes he's going to have you know crazy hair and you know big eyes and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, he's just kind of eh, whatever. Um, and, he's going to be uh, Tim Burton, but but right, manga yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that makes total <laughs> sense now. Um, but he also did talk. Of, they also did talk about the. Um, it's almost ten. Uh, the kind of eroticism inherent in a lot of horror. That there's often a lot of of that stuff showing up in horror, and why that might be, and the the, the other aspect of um, people finding horrific things not beautiful, but there there being kind of a um, like symmetry and patterns Action. and yeah, exactly that kind of stuff in in horror. So it is interesting. There, there is stuff about that in there. Um, but uh, yeah, gets the heart racing. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. not yeah. well, they hopefully in a that. weird kind of way. But... They actually mentioned that, that there, there is kind of that there is a a there are interesting comparisons to be made between the heart racing of something, you know, sexy, frankly, and the heart racing of horror. And are there like comparisons because they do seem to show up a lot together? Who knows? Hmm. Um, anyway, um, not the only anime announced this week. The official Twitter for Higurashi when they cry. Oh boy. Announced this week that the Higurashi When They Cry Go series, which just finished airing this week, is getting a follow up TV anime. Higurashi When They Cry Sotsu is at the debut in July. And Katakawa, Katakawa also began streaming a promotional video for the series, announcing the start of a new chapter. Yay. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. More My stabbing. favorite thing <laughs> ever. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, the Inuyasha spinoff series Yasha Hime also aired its final episode this week and along with that episode came the announcement the production of a sequel or part two has been greenlit um, the reveal came with a teaser visual featuring Sachimaru's daughter Toa Higurashi mm-hmm. oh interesting hmm. choice of names yeah, interesting <laughs> indeed is it not how long did uh, Inuyasha run how many, how many episodes many Many, many. Yeah. I wonder if many, they're many. gunning for for the, the sequel bit here to keep going that far. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, good luck. Um, uh, according to Wikipedia, um, uh, wow, one second. Um, about 200. So that feels right. Yep. Wow. Wow. Do you think they can get Yoshihime it, it feels that, that far? Way, yeah. It's seven seasons. Um, oh, so yeah. they're shooting for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Some of the story arcs just went on. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so I, I, you know, I will be impressed if they manage to to go that far. But yeah, I think they're gonna like let's just let's just push this. Right? Like let's see how far we can get. Right. Um, and last, an update from established anime for the week. It was announced that a new TV anime is coming in the Encouragement of Climb anime franchise. Oh. Uh, the next show in the Slice of Life mountain climbing series will be titled Yama no Susume Next Summit, and will bring back a number of staff and cast members from the previous three anime adaptation. So that wow. is pretty cool. Huh. Never seen any of that. Is it? Is it Neither. like Eurocamp kind of thing? That's I wonder? what I've heard. Is it sort of Eurocamp but climbing? Oh, I think I might have to watch that then. Yeah, yeah, I've heard good things. <laughs> and, and wait, you'll get to the episode where, like, like the one at the bottom is going, just cut the rope, save yourselves. <laughs> cut the rope. The last season, it's oh, going oh, to be, oh. we're going to summit Everest, and then you just see them going off, and there's a gathering storm. They're like, oh, 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 no. It's relaxing until they never came back. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Two new projects were announced this week from some big familiar names in the anime industry. Bushi Road has teamed up with game developers Sumzap and Dreecom to produce the new D-Side Tromere multimedia project. Uh, it's a planned smartphone game and TV anime from Sanzigen Animation Studio, which will both debut sometime this summer. The settings of the anime and the game will differ. The smartphone game is set on the beautiful island of Yurajima and centers on the studio Rando Furukara, who was chosen to become a, I am not making this up, knock-up, uh, who uh, travels between the worlds of dream and reality. Uh, anime set in Shibuya and follows Ryuhei, a high school kickboxer, bitten by an unknown creature who has a strange dream, um, is described as a noir teen story with motifs of nostalgia and the Cthulhu mythos. <laughs> Nostalgia yeah. and the Cthulhu mythos. Yep. 
to, to quote you, John, sometimes, Nani? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, Tadashi Satomi of the Shin Megami oh. Tensei of the Persona franchise and the Kogila Effect is the story writer and character concept planner for the new franchise. And Yoshikazu Kon of IDEO will direct the anime. Um, you know, Persona is a big deal. Um, yes. And Persona does meld different ideas in surprisingly effective ways. So I can see them doing that. Right mm. where there, it's 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 odd stuff, but okay, I can you know, it happens. I just well, did, you just you're messing with the Cthulhu thing, though. <laughs> Don't you know? Oh. It, well, how do you be nostalgic about Cthulhu? Remember when that time? Well, I mean, Mark, you know, H.P. Lovecraft didn't die in like 1937, so it's, it's definitely nostalgic. Well, yeah, I, I don't think they mean that kind of nostalgia. Right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, it's yeah, I just. I yeah. hate to see when people try to incorporate something and they don't do it well. Mm -hmm. So I'm really going to hope, considering how big Persona is, mm -hmm. that it means they've thrown all the money, all the time, all the yeah. thought at it, mm -hmm. and that it will be done really well. Because I'll tell you what, trying to watch the Persona anime, mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> and I, was, I couldn't do it. I'm like, I, the gameplay must be awesome to get yeah. the anime. And, yeah. You know. I've also heard that um, there, there, there are that, that this guy does sort of weave little Cthulhu, Cthulhu mythos elements a little bit into the Persona series. That they're like little little bits and pieces. Okay. Um, so I think it's one of those things where like he's a fan of the Cthulhu mythos at least. So we'll see. Um, but don't a lot of hope that. on that. Which I mean, anything you know, the crawling chaos from beyond the concept of man's mind that drives you insane. That's kind of technically in the Cthulhu mythos, even if you're not having any Cthulhu show up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just the right. concept of that kind of, like, insanity. Exactly. So I could certainly see, you know, how you could weave that easily into any of the Persona stuff. Yeah. There's some weird stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm glad to hear that, there, that it's a new concept, right? It's not, we're going to combine these two things in this Persona project. Like, you know, we're going we're to... We're going to conceive of something specifically for this. So we'll see. Um, Bandai Spirits and animation studio Sunrise Beyond, which is formerly Zebek, have also announced a new collaborative project this week. Uh, Kyokai Senki, or War Machines on the Borderline, will include a TV anime this fall, as well as a line of, of course, plastic model kits. Uh, the story is set in 2061 in a world entirely ru ruled by four trade blocks. Uh, Japan's at the forefront of a great conflict, finds itself occupied and oppressed. Huh. Patrolled constantly by humanoid war machines called Amayam. A M A I M. I don't know. Um, Gizonite? Yeah. <laughs> the story follows a young boy who, of course, acquires a mecha through chance encounter. Uh, and His a, grandfather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Get the um, robot, Shinji. And a, and a teenager who pilots the uh, the Amayam ghost in the Japanese resistance. Um Nobuyushi Habara of Fafner in Star Blazers 2020-02 is directing the anime at Sunrise mm. Beyond. And Noboro Kimura of Gundam Build Divers is supervising the series scripts. Uh, Ken Okuyuma, the industrial designer, who designed cars for Ferrari and Chevrolet, as well as the E6 and E7 series Shinkansen, is credited um, for mechanical design supervision huh. along with his company. Well, that's a hell of a CV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shinkansen, Dang. high end vehicle, and Chevrolet. Wow. And Mecca. Okay. Um, and Mecca. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, an anime was also announced this week for an existing Bandai game. Bandai Namco and Funimation revealed an anime inspired by the Scarlet Nexus role-playing game, animated by Sunrise, to debut this summer, so pretty soon. The game itself will launch on June 25th, set in a, quote, futuristic Japanese landscape that combines inspirations from classic anime and Western science fiction, end quote, in... In the story, the world is under siege by organisms called Others who feed on human brains. Good start. Uh, mm. To combat the threat, people with superhuman sensory powers are drafted into the Other Suppression Force to fight back. Who knows? You know, sounds fun. As opposed to the simple answer, which is just everybody wear a helmet. Right. I mean, God, <laughs> that's the problem. So this simple. is where the tinfoil actually works. Exactly. Right. I can't bite through simple metal, even even if it's micro thin. Everybody's fine. God. Your elves, iron, tin foil, right? Exactly. Um, 
Shogakukan revealed this week that Keisuke Makino and Karai's The Moon, Leica, and Nosferatu light novel series is inspiring a TV anime that will premiere yeah. sometime this year. Um, they're set in a fictional world divided by two superpowers who are testing their strength against each other in a space race. Hmm. Um, <laughs> Couldn't figure that. Yeah, sounds familiar. The story Amazing. follows a backup astronaut candidate and his new companion, a vampire, because of course. Yeah. Um, and she's cute. Of course, I'm sure she really is. Really wonderful. The, um, the daring new Operation Nosferatu um, <laughs> plans to use the vampire as a test subject for various conditions expected in space and eventually on a manned mission. Because you're a vampire, presumably you don't need to breathe, maybe. I, I was right? going to say, the, the test is like, okay, we in the suits kicking you out the door. There you go. <laughs> Good. See what happens to her outside. Uh, yeah, and I mean, and what kind of test is that for, like, for people who aren't vampires? Right. You know, yeah. like, hey, we can do it, too. I'm going to test whether this, you know, solid, like, uh, 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 titanium eight-foot-thick block can withstand this nine-millimeter bullet. Because that'll help me understand how it'll work against people. Be like, what are you, dumb? Well, <laughs> I'm suspecting <clears throat> that this is a series with more than one vampire in the world. So. And when she's cute, it doesn't need any more. Really honest. Come on. You know. Um, Karakawa announced on Thursday an anime adaptation coming later this year of Tomoki Izumi's Miruko chan horror comedy manga. Speaking of horror, um, uh, the manga follows um, the life of somebody who starts seeing horrible beings and just does her best to ignore them and continue her normal life with a straight face. Um, Yuki Ogawa, a furry curry progressive, and yes, interspecies reviewers is directing the anime at Passion with um, Saga of Tanya the Evil and Cautious Heroes Kenta Ihara supervising and writing the series scripts. So, who knows? Ooh. Okay, I'm watching um, that one. The Animation Department of Tokyo University of the Arts Graduation School of Film and New Media, that's a title, um, hosts a limited screening each year of graduating students' finished works. Because of the restrictions of the current times, this year's screening was held online with his shorts available on the website through tomorrow, which is pretty cool. The theme for this year's shorts was, and boy, if this isn't a theme from an arts university, comma, which represents <sighs> the briefness of time represented in a frame of animation, as well as a moment for graduates to pause and reflect on their completed works. Uh, the program's Gay Die Animation YouTube channel also has a selection of past shorts from 2010 to 2017. So that that just screams to me um, that all these movies are going to be, comma, reflection on life. Oh God, I'm about to graduate and I don't have a job, <laughs> and this, this is what I can do. We'll see. Um, oh, I love art projects. Mm -hmm. Aren't they fun? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Meditations on a China cup. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. Moving on to more serious news. This week, we lost two figures in the anime industry. Um, Ghibli producer Toshio Suzuki revealed at the 2021 Tokyo Anime Award Festival the legendary animator Yasuo Otsuka passed away on Monday at age 89. Otsuka joined Toei Doga, now Toei Animation, in 1956 and worked on uh, Legend of the White Serpent, uh, Little Prince of the Eight-Headed Dragon. He was the animation director on uh, Horus, Prince of the Sun, Otsuka later transferred to A Production, now known as Shin A Animation, and eventually to Telecom Animation Film. He served as animation director and character designer for the first Lupin the Third TV anime series, in case you've heard of that, and also worked with protege and close friend Hayao Miyazaki as director and character designer on The Castle of Cagliostro and animation director for Future Boy Conan. Then in later years, Otsuka worked as an instructor at Tokyo's Yoyogi Animation Academy and even received the association's special award for lifetime achievement at the 42nd Annual Japan Academy Prizes in 2019, worked on many other celebrated works that we didn't mention, and was praised by critics for his fluid, lively animation. Um, Otsuka is one of those just legends of the industry. Yeah. Um, and just sad to see the passing. Studio Puro also reported this week that animator and character designer Minako Shiba has passed away. She's probably best known for her character designs on a number of familiar anime, including noir, Black Butler, Hikaru no Go, and Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle, and has done anime character designs as recently as last year's Hypnosis Mike Division <coughs> Rap Battle Rhyme Anime. 
on many of our anime projects, he's also credited as key animator, episode animation director, or chief animation director, and has been animation director on numerous other anime, including Dr. Stone and Blood Plus. Always sad to see that sort of passing. Um, moving on, Demon Slayer Mugen Train has been sweeping the world since it came out, and North America is the next stop. Aniplex and Funimation announced this week that the film will open in the U.S. and Canada on April 23rd, including in 4DX and on IMAX screens, wow. with screenings in both Japanese with English subtitles and English dubbed. Tickets will go on sale on Funimation's website starting April 9th, and if sold-out showings in other countries are anything to go by, fans might want to get there early. The film will then go on sale digitally on June 22nd. Yeah, that's like two months later uh, across major streaming services with pre-orders beginning April 26th on Apple, Apple TV, Microsoft Store, and the PlayStation Store. That's about the it's only coming. way I'm going to see it. Yep. <laughs> like, it's coming. I doubt I can get to the theater, but oh boy, wow. I can't wait to see what's going to happen yeah. when it opens. Oof. Mm-hmm. I, oh, hope, my. I hope like, there's a craze. Like, I hope this is a big deal. I hope folks show up in cosplay. You know, I hope this has a, a big rise. Yes. While being socially responsible for distance, masks, blah, 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 blah. Sure, of course. But, yeah, I'm, I just, I want to, I, I, we're, be, we've been on this train for a while. I want to see, like, how insanely big will this get with, gets this next phase? Yep. Like, come on, here we go. Steve's Pachinko Parlor is getting closer to home <laughs> shores. Doesn't even have to be in Japan anymore. Exactly. Um, now, earlier today, we saw a Rumiko Takahashi pop-up cafe. Shogaku Kun's Big Comic yeah. Original Magazine revealed this week that Rumiko Takahashi will publish a new one-shot as part of her Rumik Theater series in the magazine's April issue. It'll be titled The Woman from the Past and will tell the story of a ghost appearing before a regular married couple and how their average everyday life begins to crumble. Understandably. Um, the Rumik Theater series, by the way, is an irregular series of shorts that runs in Big Comic Original and has inspired both the TV anime anthology and live action TV series. So that is pretty cool to see more Taka- Rumiko Takahashi works coming out. Yep. Um, to give you an idea, um, at one point she was like the second richest woman in Japan. Um, wow. Yeah. I she's, believe that. She's. Yeah. Done very well for herself <laughs> with her various yes. franchises. Um, nice. She's, yeah, um, absolutely uh, nuts. Actually, I'm going to look it up now, see what the uh, the numbers are, um, if that has um, changed uh, whatever. Um, do, 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 do. Um, uh, career, animation, popularity, and impact, honors, major works. Nothing on Wikipedia at the moment. Um, but yes, Tagahashi, again, major figure in the industry. So, more Takahashi? Wow. I just want coming to school. Wow. So, yeah. That's, that's all the news fit to print this week. 